All right, guys, let's kick it off. Today's uh, Level Up Training, uh, Monday, August 1st. Uh, today's all about showing homes, guys, all about showing homes, best practices for showing homes. We have a lot of uh, awesome agents on our team, a lot of people doing some, some great things, delivering lots of value to their clients when they go out there and show homes. Uh, so I really just wanted to have this open discussion and also use this as a training going forward. So when we have other agents join the team, they can go back and watch this video and like really hear what the best practices are. Um, I always like to start off with a little bit of mindset behind everything that we do. Um, showing homes is really the way that we connect with a lot of our clients, a lot of our leads, especially like Zillow Flex or online inquiries. Um, the first impression that we make obviously is when we take that initial phone call, but then the real impression comes when you actually meet them in person and it's now time to perform and deliver value. And that's going to be the differentiator on whether they decide to work with you or not. Because anybody can take a call that comes in, especially with Zillow Flex and stuff like that. We have so many leads coming in. It's real easy to answer a call and say, okay, I'll show you this home at two o'clock or three o'clock. That's the easy part, guys. Would you guys all agree that that's the easy part? All right? Like when you have a lead coming in and they inquired on a property, there really wasn't any work that was done to get them to meet with you because they are already interested in that property, right? The real work comes when you show up to the appointment, to the showing, and you meet them in person. That's really when um, the most impression can be made, the biggest impact can be made on the client is when you show up, how you conduct yourself when you show up, how you make them feel, how much value you deliver. So what I really want to drive home today, guys, is that the better you can be at showing homes, the more that you can master the art of showing homes, the more that you can think like, hey, how can I go deeper with this? How can I um, deliver more value than the other agent? Because we have to assume that a buyer is probably going to look at homes with another agent, or maybe they're coming to an open house and they might be meeting other agents out in the field. So how do I stand out? How do I make the biggest impact on a home buyer? Um, when I'm meeting them for the first time at a property and also when I'm showing them other homes as we go forward, right? Let's say they decide to, you know, look at more homes with you. How do I keep that impact and, and that value the whole entire time, right? So I really want us to drive home that the more that you can master this part of the process, the more your conversion is going to go up, the more deals you're going to close, the more satisfied clients you're going to have, and the more referrals you are going to get. So um, that's the mindset behind this, right? We got to get really, really good at, at wowing people when we show homes. So I want to have an open discussion with everyone, especially from some of our top guys. We have a couple guys on our, on our panel here that are, um, really experienced at showing homes that have showed a lot of homes that have got a lot of buyers in contract and make no mistake that there's certain things that these people do or a certain way they approach the home showing that makes them successful. Um, People who are really good at what they do, they don't just wing it. They have a certain process that they follow, right? Or at least a certain guideline or a certain outline that they follow um, to say, hey, this is what I do to make it successful. So I want to break it down in three parts of showing homes. Before you show the home, what, what are you doing before you actually go out there to meet them? How are you prepping for the showing? Are there certain things that you do um, to prep for the showing um, so that you can show up and make the showing easier or make it more in your favor or have a bigger impact? So what are you doing before the showing? We're going to touch on that. And then we're going to touch on what are you doing during the showing, right? How do you show up during the showing? What are the different things you do up during the showing? And then what are you doing after the showing, right? You go show the home, the client might be interested or whatever happens from there. What are you doing after the showing to get them to move forward to the offer table and to try to get them closer to getting in contract, right? So let's start off, guys. Um, I'm, I'll jot some notes down. We'll talk a little bit, and I'm going to put some notes down on, a, on a, uh, a sheet that we'll be able to share going forward as well. Um, so let's talk about those of you guys that have shown a lot of homes, that have gotten clients in contract, uh, um, that are having success. Let's talk about the prep. What are you guys doing to prep for the showing, the initial showing? Uh, go ahead and raise your hand and then I'll call on you. 
um, and give you the stage. Mauricio, all right, let's go ahead and unmute Mauricio. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Maybe so, walk me through certain things you do before the showing. Yeah, so what I usually do is, um, one, I'll, I'll confirm that we are obviously going to show the homes. Um, and I'll confirm, hey, this is the list of homes that we're going to show. Do you want to add anything else from the list that I sent you pre, uh, prior? Or um, do you want to maybe skip a few? And then, you know, once I confirm those, I call the agent, say, hey, just, I'm about to show your home. Anything you want to give me feedback on, you know, the seller's expectations, things like that. Um, then once I have all that taken care of, I will, I memorize uh, days on market, bedrooms, bathrooms, uh, living square footage and lot size. Um, <clears throat> original list price. And if there is a list price reduction, and that's kind of what I do to prep for the home, aside from like printing out the, the, uh, the client copy, right? So I, I print out client copies and then, you know, like, Hey, you know, here's this one. Um, and I save those towards the end, but that's kind of what I do before actually showing the homes, obviously getting ready. And okay. Things like that. okay. So let's stop there. Right. Cause there's a lot that he said right there. Right. And, and, and those, a lot of that stuff can easily go over your head. I'm going to, I'm going to jot down right here what I heard him say and what the things that stood out to me. So number one was confirming which homes he will show with the client, right? Yeah. Confirm with the client and also with the listing agent, mm -hmm. right? Letting them know, hey, I'm going to be showing your home. Maybe you set the appointment a day or two before or whatever it might be whenever you book the, the showings, but you're going back to reconfirm with the client, right? Hey, hey just want to reconfirm. We're going to be looking at one, two, three Main Street. One, two, three, uh, Ford Road, and one, two, three, Fontanelle, right? Those are the three that we're gonna look at. Are there any other ones you saw um, or maybe on the list that I sent you that you absolutely don't wanna see? Um, and just basically reconfirming like, hey, these are the ones that we are gonna see. Right. Why is this important, guys? Because you may have talked to that client a couple of days prior and something can change, right? Like that property could have went under contract in between that time. Um, Maybe the client relooked at the list and they were like, yeah, that one's a little too far or that one doesn't fit my needs or whatever it might be. So initially they said yes. And then now like they changed their mind on that particular property. Right. So it's important that you reconfirm before you go out there. The other thing, too, is you want to make sure the client's going to show up. Right. Because you may have blocked out your calendar, uh, you know, time slot for you know an hour, two hours to go show homes with this client. You don't want to assume that they're just going to meet you if you booked the appointment yesterday, right? Things could have changed from yesterday till today. So confirming that the client still wants to go see these, which ones you're going to see, and also confirming with the listing agent that it's still available and all that good stuff, right? That was that was a, a big thing that I heard. Um, the second thing, go ahead. So yeah, um, before we move on, so another reason why <clears throat> I always confirm with them is because I've caught like, you know, when we're in the middle of showings or at the end, they'll be like, hey, we also saw this one. Do um, you think we can go look at it right now? And I'm like, well, you know, I have other things I have to do or I like, oh, we'll have another one. We're not gonna check with the agent, see if it's available. Um, and it's just more tedious to do that stuff on your phone than to be like, hey, before we go, you know, did you see something on Zillow? Um, or maybe, you know, did you wanna adjust anything? Things like that. So in case you say, yeah, actually I saw this other one or my daughter saw this house you think we can see it today? Okay, let me call and see if I can throw it on the tour with us, right? It saves a lot of time. And then it just, yeah. it just seems like you're more prepared and you're more available for them to do the most. That's what I noticed. And I, I think that's important now because right now with more inventory coming to the market, right? As the inventory goes up, there's other homes that may have popped up from yesterday till today when you last spoke with them, right? There may be another hot listing that just went on the market in that neighborhood and they're like, hey, can we go see this one and add it, right? And that can derail you, your whole entire uh, time maybe. slot or whatever you have going on. Or maybe you have another showing going on after that, right? Right. And you don't um, want to be like, no, I can't show you. Or just be rude and be like, so well, we'll do another time. Things like that. So. Right? Because you want to get the clients when they're hot, right? If they're hot and they're motivated and they saw this other one, they really want to go see it. It would be, it would suck if you had to say, oh, sorry, I don't have time to go show you that one. Or sorry, uh, I don't know if that one's available, right? And you just weren't prepared. Remember this, we're in the service industry, right? So 
when we go out there, we want to make sure we're delivering a good service to the client and being able to get access to homes that they want to see. Um, the other important thing that um, Mauricio said was gather as much information about the homes from the listing agent. Right, or just from the listing in general, right? Like study, right? Study the home before showing. Why is that important, guys? Why is it important to study the home and gather as much info from the listing agent before you go show it? Who can who can fill that in for me? Who can tell me? It actually builds rapport with the listing agent prior to the showing. And when you're at the, at the showing itself, you should know the property at the back of your hand. Yep. Absolutely, Carla. Um, Carla, by the way, has gotten over what, 20 clients in contract year to date, right? Somewhere, somewhere around there, give or take. Uh, <laughs> somewhere around there, yeah. <laughs> So you're hearing from someone who showed a lot of homes, right? And who has had to make a lot of impact on people when, when they go out to show homes. And I say that be because I want you to pay attention to that, right? Building rapport with the listing agent is extremely important because if your client's interested in that property, we need to have as much influence as possible with that listing agent to gather information or to know, hey, what does the seller need? What are the expectations? Where does my offer need to come in at? And then the other part is you're selling a product, right? At the end of the day, the home is the product you're selling. So if you don't know your product and you go out there and the, the buyer knows more than you because they've, they've looked online and they've read everything about it, you're not going to look that smart and that impressive to the client, right? You don't want to show up to a property and know nothing about the property, right? In fact, you want to know more than the client. And that's a little difficult today because a lot of the information is online, right? So by you talking to the listing agent, you're going to find out that information that is not online, right? You'll be able to quickly glance at the disclosures or the private remarks or anything like that. So that when you go there, in addition to everything that's online, you're like, hey, Mr. Buyer, I wanted to point out this about the property. I spoke to the listing agent and there was a death in the property. That's not showing online, right? Or there's unpermitted work on this property. There's a... a, a a room in the back that doesn't have permits that may be a financing issue. It's something we got to talk about, right? You're not going to see that on Redfin or, or Zillow or any of those websites, right? Or, hey, there's a lawsuit on this property or something like that. Jay, what else you got? No, one, one thing that I like that Mauricio stated was he calls about the property, but then he also asked the listing agent, what is your seller looking for? Right. I think that's really important to point out so that, yeah, you know, like like you said, everything is online, but we don't know what the seller is actually looking for. So I think that's important that you bring that extra information to your buyer so that if they'd like that particular property, you guys have an expectation of what the seller wants. Yep. So I'm writing that down, writing that down. Always ask what the seller is looking for. Because imagine you got two scenarios, right? Like, like they go see a home with one agent. The agent knows nothing about the property, doesn't know what the seller's looking for, didn't really study the, the MLS, didn't call the, the listing agent, didn't have really any info, right? That's the other agent. And then you got the PRG agent, the elite agent, the ones that you guys are all, you know, becoming and the ones that you guys are that goes out there and you're able to say, hey, I already looked at the disclosures. These are the couple of things that you're going to want to be aware of. I actually spoke to the listing agent. The seller is looking for this price because they have to buy another property in, in Colorado and they got to move by this date. So I think they're motivated. They may be willing to take a lower offer than what you see listed. And, you know, boom, 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 all these different points. Two different experiences, right? Credibility with you is way up. Credibility with that other agent, like, ah, uh, they forgot about that guy, right? As soon as you start talking. So you got to understand that the more prepared you are, the more value you're going to bring to that appointment. Carl, did you have something else to add? Also, on just to piggyback on that, one of the questions that I always ask to build rapport is, 
you want to look at the disclosure. If that's the property that the buyer really wants, you want to look at the disclosures up front. And not just that, when you're on the phone with the listing agent, these are the questions you probably have to figure out like one to two questions to build rapport with them from the disclosures. So in their mind, they understand like, oh, she actually did her homework before calling me, you know, at the same time, one of the biggest questions that I like when I ask about listing agents is that, are there any selling points on the property that you want to share to my client? And they'll tell you everything about the property. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Write that down, right? That's a question to put into your into your arsenal when calling the listing agent. Are there any selling points about the property that you want me to share with my client when I when I take them to see it today? Especially now, right? Now that the market is starting to shift, all those little extra things are going to be the differentiators, right? You know, last year it was like people didn't care what the property looked like right? Like they just threw offers because the rates were so low, whatever it might be. And they were motivated, sight unseen, even sometimes non-contingent. Now buyers are going to be asking more questions because they have more leverage, right? There's more properties to choose from as well. So when there's more inventory, buyers become more picky. So the more information you can bring of a selling point on why this is a great property or a great deal or a great location or the features of the property, the more that you can get them closer to, you know, the, the sales table, right? To the table or, or making an offer, or get them closer to getting in contract. So awesome, awesome points. Anything else, guys, from some of you guys that, that are, are experienced, um, anything else you do before the showing to prep for the showing? I sometimes look at comps because a lot of the times, although you're showing them that property, what are the odds that that's the property they're going to like? So I already have at least some insight. Like if I can, if I'm there and I can, I can sense like, mm, they're not really feeling it. I can be like, well, if you like the area and you like this, there is also, you know, this and this property as well. I don't like to bring a paper copy with me because then I give it to them. Um, so if I like to say something like, okay, I'll send it to you later, that gives me an excuse to follow up with them with a purpose the next time I reach out to them. Not so. That's awesome. Awesome advice, right? Knowing the comps, doing a quick little glance at, you know, uh, what's active, what's pending, what has sold, because now you'll be able to share that information with the client. Hey guys, just want to give you a heads up. There's one down the street that just went pending in five days. There's one that just sold for this much, right? Remember, this is all more information that you're able to give to the client and it makes you more valuable. And then that, that tip of not giving them the copy right there, it keeps them needing to talk to you, right? So if you're like, hey, let's set up a time when we can follow up and go over this information or I can send it to you. Now they need you, right? You're not just the door or opener. So I, I love that you brought that up. Um, Manny wrote in the chat, uh, Manny has a ton of a uh, ton of experience. Um, know the neighborhood, right? So, what are some ways that you can get to know the neighborhood? Because th sometimes you might get a lead and you don't know that neighborhood, right? Have you guys ever experienced that? You get a lead like in Pleasanton or a certain area that you've never really gone to. Uh, what are some quick resources or what's some quick uh, best practices to kind of get to know a neighborhood? Who can share on that? Google Map Street View. <laughs> What I do is do for sure. It's very helpful. And Google Street Map View could could let you know what the property or the neighborhood looks like every decade. And that's another selling point to the buyer if they're super interested in that neighborhood or progressively looking at different perspective. So Google Map, the street view. I remember we used to do that when we were analyzing properties that we were interested in buying to flip. We would go on Google maps we would look at the street view and then we would move the whole thing around and you could see like are there a bunch of cars parked everywhere is there people on the corner i remember in oakland one time <laughs> we were looking at this property and then we we scanned to the right and at the corner there was a liquor store and there was like three thugs with like 40s in their hand <laughs> on the corner <laughs> and i was like yeah i don't i don't want to buy this one i don't think this is a good area to buy a, a rental property um, or other ones where you just see trash all over the neighborhood or a bunch of like broken down cars and stuff like that. You can kind of, you can kind of know like, Hey, are we in the hood or are we in the, the, the higher uh, end neighborhood? Right. Um, what else, what, what was someone else saying? I think someone else commented. How do you get to know the neighborhood? If I'm like showing a property and I get there before and I see anyone outside, 
I'll just like start up a conversation, be like, oh, hi, my name's Lily. I'm a realtor. My clients are on their way. I'm going to show them this property. Is there anything you can tell me about the neighborhood? Neighbors love to talk. But that that's only if I see them. There you go, right? So showing up, showing up early, right? That You have to show up early to be able to do that, right? So if you're able to show up early, which I highly recommend, you always want to be there before the client. That just makes you look a lot more prepared. And then if there's neighbors, talk to the neighbors, ask them how the neighborhood is, right? There's always some nosy neighbor out there peeking around trying to, trying to tell you the gossip, right? Oh. That's what I do also. And then um, sometimes when we're outside talking, there's people passing by and then I just start talking to them and they're, they're hearing the feedback. And then they start asking. Yep. So we got Google Maps. We got talk to the neighbors, show up early. And we also got know the schools, right? Like if you click on the listing and you go like on Redfin or Zillow or any of those public sites, you'll be able to see a lot of the information when you scroll down about the neighborhood or the particular zip code. Um, you'll be able to see the schools, you can see the school ratings, all that good stuff. I remember when I used to show homes or even when I would meet with the sellers and I was trying to go through comps, I would have all the comps and I would write little notes next to every single comp. Like this one was upgraded, good schools, these are the school ratings. Like there were certain like things that I would write um, remodeled, not remodeled, fixer upper. Um, and it just like a little quick little cheat sheet with quick little notes that I would have to refer to so that I didn't forget. All right. So, um, doing a quick little search, even just Googling the zip code, like seeing what nearby amenities are, right. What shopping centers are nearby. Are there malls nearby? What freeway, right. A lot of people commute, um, what freeway is nearby, stuff like that. You do your homework, guys, in five, 10 minutes, you're going to know most of the stuff, you know, the general stuff about that neighborhood, right? So it's just, it's just preparing. Um, okay. Let's move on, guys. Um, now we're going to move on to what are you doing during the showing, right? We prepared for the showing. We did our homework. We called the listing agent. We went over all that good stuff. We asked about the selling points. We looked at the Google Maps. We now have a good understanding of the disclosures, all the different things about this property so that we're knowledgeable. Harold, I'm going to call on you, brother. Um, walk me through your process of when you show up to the property and like, what, what do you go through? You know, what, what do you do when you show up to the property and it's time to show the home? Sure. So number one thing, you got to be there early. Um, that way you have time to go through the house, um, open the windows, turn on the lights, um, you know, make it look presentable, make sure everything is good um, and just be there ready to welcome your client in. Um, usually if it's my first time ever meeting the client, I try to bring everything. So comps, um, property information, you know, any key things on the disclosures. Um, if it's, if I've been showing them for a while, I usually let them know like, Hey, like we're going to see seven houses today. Um, let me know your top two or three at the end and I'll email all those things for you. But if it's the first time I bring everything on hand, um, just to save paper, um, and kind of give that good first impression. Um, now if there are neighbors that are, sometimes you, I, I always see neighbors, you know, like doing stuff outside or whatever. I try to talk to them and kind of ask them what they think about the neighborhood. Um, and that way I can tell the clients, you know, like, Hey, like I, I talked to the neighbor, by the way, um, they said the community is great. The HOA is very responsive in this na neighborhood. Um, you know, if you ever have any issues, like they're, they're very responsive, they'll fix things. Um, you know, they're always doing maintenance or whatever info that you can give them. Um, once we are inside the home, um, I usually let the client, I like welcome them. Um, I let them go in to the house themselves um, and kind of have their own time between husband and wife or um, to kind of discuss by themselves. I don't try to go with them to every single room. Um, and then once they come back out, you know, I kind of ask them like, hey, like perfect. Like, what do you guys think so far? Um, especially if it's my first time showing them out. It's like, oh, like, what do you like about the home? You know, what are the things that you really like? Um, that way I can gauge what they're looking for specifically. And I also ask them like, what are the things that you don't like about the home, right? Um, that helps me narrow it for future showings, you know, like, okay, these are the things that I can avoid, you know, when I show them homes, I want to make sure it's catered to them. So that way they feel like I'm not sending them just random lists, but it's like homes that are towards their taste. Um, and then I also like to ask them what they rate between uh, this home on a one to 10, 
I think I learned this from somebody else here or one of our coaching things, but um, this was also back in the time when, um, you know, it was, it was a hot seller's market, not, not as much as it is now, but I would tell them like, Hey, like if it's anything seven and above, we should um, write an offer um, and at least get that foot in the door um, and get them in the practice of, you know, bringing them to that offer table um, and kind of setting that expectation that we're not going to find that perfect house that hits every single thing, like price, location, size, you know, all your criteria. But even if it's like an eight out of 10, you know, that should be good for us to at least attempt an offer on. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. So um, uh, let me share this note section here. Let's recap that, right? Um, Kind of what I wrote, what I wrote down was show up early so you can prep the home, right? It's important to prep the home when you show up to these properties because you want to have the client come in. Think about the difference in the experience, right? Like there's two different experiences a client can have. The client can have the experience where they show up and they're waiting for you. And then you're like rushing, trying to get there. And then you're fumbling, trying to get the Supra open. Sometimes those Supras give you problems. The thing gets stuck. You don't know which key is for the top lock, the bottom lock, the side door. And then the house is like, you know, no, it's all dark. All the blinds are, you know, closed and it looks scary coming in and you're like coming in and you're like trying to figure it out with the client right there, right behind you, just kind of watching you waiting on you, right? Like that's a bad experience, guys. And unfortunately, a lot of agents are doing that. Like they do that because they just didn't prepare. Or here's the other experience, right? is you show up 10, 15 minutes early before your client, you gave yourself enough time, right? In between your appointments or you left on time and you, you routed the map and everything, you knew what traffic was gonna be like. You have the door already open. You have all the lights already on. You have all the blinds open. Um, let's say there was like a smell in the house. You got the sliding door open. You got a nice little breeze in there, something like that. You got all the doors to all the rooms open. If there was something that looked out of place, like with the staging, maybe the last, showing there's a bunch of kids that messed up all the pillows you fix the pillows you guys know i hate messed up pillows right you have all the pillows nice and nice and organized because remember you're trying to sell the product right and the client walks in and like the house looks 10 times better with all the lights and all the natural light coming in than it did when it was all dark and gloomy right natural light and stuff like that does wonders to the appearance of a home right makes everything look bigger brighter cleaner all that good stuff. And you've already walked around the property. You've already seen the things that were out of place. Maybe there was dog poop in the backyard. I don't know, right? Like depends what, sometimes you run into some crazy situations, right? Um, you fixed everything and now it's a nice presentable product that the client can see, right? You covered up any major red flags or any things that would have turned someone off ahead of time. And you already knew like the client wasn't going to like that back little room. That's hella small. That's all awkward. And you kind of already knew that ahead of time. So when the client comes in, you're able to point it out. Right. So that's the difference between showing up late or right when the client gets there and showing up early and preparing the home to be viewed. Right. So I want, I really want, want to point that out and drive that home because we have to remember we are selling a product and we want to prep the home to be viewed as much as possible. Um, so that's what I, that's the big thing I heard. Um, talking to the neighbors, right? The earlier you show up, the opportunity it gives you to talk to neighbors, if there's some neighbors out there to ask, hey, you know, what's it like to live in this neighborhood? What are some of the things that you would point out, right? What do you like? What, what do you not like? Are there any crazy neighbors that we should know about, right? Maybe they are the crazy neighbor, the one you're talking to, right? So um, what else did he say, guys? I, I think, Enrique, just kind of go back, out. going back to that, I think getting there early allows you to talk to the neighbor to get the info about that property, but then that's also an opportunity to market yourself, right? You, you may have a neighbor that may have a buyer that wants to move into that area, or you may have a neighbor that may be considering selling. Right. So also use that opportunity to build rapport with those neighbors because they may have opportunity for you. Yeah, we 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 that's something that we that we would always talk about. And that's thanks for bringing that up again. Right. Is when you show up earlier, you can go door knock the two neighbors to the right and the two neighbors to the left. 
and go say, hey guys, you know, it's Enrique, you know, PRG Real Estate. I'm about to show your neighbor's home right here. Just wanted to introduce myself. Wanted to see if you had any information about the neighborhood that might be valuable to share with my, my client. Here's my card in case you guys need anything. I don't know if they're gonna go for this home, but if you guys have ever thought about selling your home, they are looking in this neighborhood, right? So you kind of kill two birds with one stone, right? You find out information, you meet the neighbors, and then you're marketing yourself. And there may be a listing opportunity that pops up and you actually have a buyer that's looking in that neighborhood. That's the big difference than going out there and door knocking. Some of you guys have talked to me about wanting to go door knock a neighborhood or farm, but just imagine if your door knocking was, hey, I door knock every home that I show to clients. I door knock every neighborhood, right? I don't just go cold and just door knock random homes. I door knock homes where I have buyers already looking, right? Just a different approach, right? And it, and it serves two purposes. So uh, I really like how you, how you pointed that out. Um, anything else? What else? What else can we add? Okay, you got there early, you prepped the home for showing, you talked to the neighbors, you found out some info, you maybe door knocked a couple. What are you saying during the showing? Is there any things that you are saying during the showing or are you leading the client through the property in a certain way? Um, Lily, you raised your hand. What can you tell me? Yeah, so um, kind of something that Harold said that I like to do too. He said he kind of lets them go off on their own. Um, I like to do that too. Um, when I, if I get there early, I turn on most of the lights and open most of the blinds. And I, um, I, because I do, I've done it so often, it's almost becomes like, it's really natural when I do it, but I always let people open the door themselves. Um, that's just something that I was taught because then it makes them feel like they're walking into their home. But I say something like, I'm going to go ahead and finish, um, turning on all the lights, make yourselves at home. It may be your home and I'll come back and check in on you guys a little bit. Um, I think it like it makes people feel like there's not that like pressure where they can like talk them up amongst themselves. And not only that, but then they can kind of like see it without worrying that there's like an agent hovering over them. Um, I think Carol mentioned that he does something similar where he lets them kind of like check it out and then he comes and follows up and asks them questions. That's kind of what I do too. I like that. And I think that's a good approach, right? Because when you have like an agent hounding you and they're just like on right behind you, like in every room, they may not explore the home like they normally would. So letting them know like, hey, go ahead and take a look. I'll be right here or I'm going to finish doing this. Feel free to make yourself at home. This is a large investment. Feel free to open cabinets and check things out. Open the vanities like, you know, check out the product, right? Take it for a test drive sit on the toilet, do whatever you got to do, right? Like this is a home you're going to pay a million dollars for. So I would want to start opening cabinets and like seeing like, are these good kitchen cabinets? Are, are they the soft closed drawers? All those different things. But if you're hounding the client and you're just standing like this right behind them, they may not be comfortable enough to do those things. And hey, that could make the difference in them wanting to buy that home or not, right? Lisa, what do you got? Hi, I love this call, everything. There's so much good value in this call. I just want to add that one thing that I've been doing because I've been hearing video texting is a is a is something we want to be adding. So um, now when I go early, I scope out the areas because a lot of times I'm doing these townhomes and it's a really difficult to find the location and then find the parking. Is there guest parking? So I'm going early, um, earlier <laughs> and I'm putting a video text of myself. I do it pretty far away. So they see my chest, my stomach. So I say, this is me. This is what I'm wearing today. I've got this bright, you know, pink shirt on. I've also found the parking right here. There's a lot of street parking available. I'm going to be standing either by the front door, if that's what you see first, or I'm going to be standing in the perfect parking spot for you. Um, on the first showing of that day, that's kind of that way. They're not like wondering, what am I wearing? Do I stand out? Because I've even looked for people and they're in all black and they're behind a tree and it was hard to see them. So I've changed up and kind of put something more brighter on so that they're not wondering where I am. And then additionally, like when we first meet on Zilla, I'm sending them my contact information with my photo, my info, and then um, trying to get, you know, and then even like at the close, when I leave, I, I do send like when I'm closing lights off, I'll take the like a quick video tour of me thanking them for coming to the last home we showed because sometimes there's like six houses and you don't want to do it for everyone. But um, I'm trying to incorporate the video texting too to be more memorable. That's awesome. Lisa, good job. That's, that's some stuff that I, I wouldn't even 
can think of. That's why we have these masterminds here, right? If you're showing a townhouse or a condo, sometimes the parking is the situation, right? Like that's a situation where you don't know where to park and maybe you got to go through like all these different little walkways to get to the unit. So if you know you're going to show townhouses or condos, make sure you get there a little earlier so that you can let, the, let them know where to park at, where it's at. And I love that you're incorporating the video texting because that that's something we probably got to add to the first step of before, right? Hey guys, I'll see you over there. This is what I'm wearing today. Yada, 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 right? So um, yeah, jot that down, guys. That's something I would definitely add to my arsenal there. That's just going to take your service to the next level. Um, one thing I wanted to add is I know when I would show homes because we have a lot of experience in like the construction and the remodeling and all that stuff from all the flips and projects we did is I would point out a lot of things where like, hey, this is good work or hey, this is something, um, especially like homes also that need work. It's going to be in your best interest to have a decent understanding of what it costs to remodel a kitchen or to change hardwood floor or floors or to do paint, right? Because you may show a home that is a great, a good deal, but it needs a little TLC. And if you don't know how to at least give them a ballpark of what it costs to do some of these repairs, there's a big miss right there, right? Think about this, like every time your client has to go to someone else to get the information, you become less valuable. Let me say that one more time. Every time your client has to go somewhere else to get some information that pertains to the process of buying a home, you become less valuable. So wouldn't it make sense for you to know all this stuff so that your client only comes to you, right? Like you're the knowledgeable person. Wouldn't it make sense for you to do your research on what it costs to remodel homes or to at least do paint or carpet or flooring or any of that stuff. And I think we even might have a little marketing piece floating around where it just had like a cheat sheet. Um, uh, let's look into that guys. I think we had it, DJ had made it. We, we gotta get this distributed to everybody. But if you can tell them like, hey, more or less, you know, it's gonna cost you, you know, 10 to 20 grand to remodel this kitchen. More or less, you're going to spend five to 10 grand to do the floors. More or less, it's going to cost you five to 10 grand to do the paint. You know, like kind of some of the basic stuff. We're not asking you to be a contractor, but if you know the basics, right, you now become a lot more valuable. And you can say, hey, guys, this is why I think this is a good deal. This property has been on the market for this long. We could probably negotiate it, you know, even lower than the asking price. It might cost you 40 grand to fix it up the way you want it but now you're walking in with instant equity, right? And we have the manpower and the resources to help you do this stuff. So I always like to look at it from like uh, improvement standpoint. Like I point out like stuff, like when I open cabinets, like sometimes there's some really funky jobs that people have done on some of these flips or remodels. Like you open a cabinet and it's hitting the other cabinet. I point that stuff out, like the craftsmanship, right? Like, hey guys, like, you know, yeah, it looks nice, but you can tell they, they skipped some steps here. Or you can see this baseboard is like coming off or they didn't paint this part of the thing, right? And that locks me in with a lot of clients because that's something that other agents may not be able to tell them. And now they're looking at me as the authority, right? Like, oh, shoot, this guy has all the information. Serious value. Thanks, Manny. Um, yeah, it's on Slack on the general channel. Just search estimates. So if you go on Slack and I'll, I'll repost it in Slack so it's, it comes up to the top. All right, so let's talk about now the transition, right? We got 15 minutes left. Let's talk about the transition of you showed the home, right? You did all the prep, you showed value, you showed up early, you made the home ready for it to be viewed, all that good stuff. You pointed out all the good, the bad, the ugly of the home. You, you gave some serious value in that appointment, in that showing, you hit it off with the client. Um, I think one thing I forgot, and this is, this is probably really, really important, uh, is how, what is your personality like during the showing, right? There's some of us on this call that naturally you're great with people, right? Like you're bubbly, you make, you know how to make people feel good. And there's some people where they actually have to turn that on a bit. Would you guys agree? 
right? There's some people where naturally maybe they're more quiet or introverted, but when they're in front of clients, like they can turn it on. So I want to talk about that. What is your demeanor like when you are meeting with clients? Um, I'm going to call on Anna because I know Anna is a great example of someone who hits it off with a lot of clients personality wise. What happened? What, what is, is that, your demeanor like when you're showing home? What is your personality like? Is there something like you intentionally do? Do you just show up as Anna or do you're like, hey, I'm trying to hit it off and win these guys over. I'm throwing out extra jokes and stuff like that. Or like, how do you, what is your demeanor like when you meet with clients? I think for the most part, I, I know I have a big personality. <laughs> and so when it okay. comes to talking to my clients, I make sure to first get all of the info out of the way and answer all of their questions. And then from there, as we're viewing the home, I start really just telling them like, um, there are a few things that I love to hear from clients is when they're it, literally imagining themselves there and saying, oh, like, this is where I want like my couch or something like that. And that's when I start talking to them about their future and about what they're looking for at the end of their, you know, the end of the process. So I try just to really be a little bit more personal with them um, on a deeper level. So that, that's usually what I do. I do throw in some jokes here and there because I just tend to joke a little bit too much. <laughs> but as long as oh, that's, we're getting all questions. Yeah, that's great. So, so what I hear her saying is she tries to be more personable, right? right? Like intentionally, like, cause you think about it. Like you could have had a shitty day, right? You could have had something going on. You could have had another deal that's driving you crazy or stressing you out or something going on in your personal life. And now you got to show up and meet these clients right so the biggest thing i want to tell you guys is, is you have to have the vibe check I've, some of you guys may have heard this before before you enter a new doorway check your energy check your vibe right what's the vibe that i'm bringing to this interaction that i'm about to face am i coming in all like pissed off and stressed about my day or am i like nope lights camera action it's time to win these guys over right Hey, what's up? How you doing? Hey, I'm Enrique. Nice to meet you guys. Like, thank you so much for coming out here. Like, I'm excited to show you guys this home. How's your day going? Like, if you have an energy that comes off so awesome, so, you know, uh, inspiring, like this is a good energy, positive energy, how could you not want to deal with someone like that? Versus like, hi guys, uh, how you doing? Any questions about this house? Yeah, go ahead and take a look and um, I'll be right here. Like, it's just a different experience, right? Versus like, hey guys, what do you think about this property? Like, can you guys like see yourself living here? Is there anything you would change? Is there anything, what do you really love about this home? Like, what are you guys into? You guys, you guys watch sports? Where would you put that big TV? That 70 inch screen TV that we just raffled off. Where are you going to put that bad boy, right? You guys barbecue. I love the barbecue. I don't know if you guys like to entertain. This is a great backyard that you can entertain in. Like, this is what I would do with it. I'd probably put my barbecue pit right here. I'd be having my umbrella, my chairs, like whatever it might be. So really making sure that you're bringing in energy where you make them feel good and you make them feel welcome and you make them feel excited to be there. Because if you can make someone feel excited about the process and make them feel good, you become sticky, right? You're someone people want to be around. And if that's not you normally, if normally you're not like that, you better get really good at turning that shit on, right? Being able to turn that on when it's time to perform, right? So just saying like consciously, hey, I'm about to walk into this door and show this home. All right, take a deep breath, bring the vibe. Bring the energy, make these people feel good. I'm here to serve these guys. I'm here to make sure they have a great experience. I wanna make sure no question was left unanswered. Diana, what you got? Um, so what I try to use that time, kind of like what Anna said, figure out what it is they're looking for or like what we heard with their, like if they bought the house, what it would do for them how it would change their life, right? Getting deeper, like that's what I learned recently and just wanted to share that. Like, see, like if it's space, like when you show that house, 
look at the space your kid would have here to run around, you know? Um, yeah, and then I always pull, like Liliana said, the comps because I want to let them know that I know and I've seen what sold recently, what the original price was, but what it actually sold for. I bring that in so they see. Yep. Um, I like that you guys touched on that, right? Is getting deeper with your clients, right? Because if you stay really surface level and you're just, you just talk about the house and that's it, it's transactional, right? Anybody can do that. Anybody can just say, yeah, I like the house, put an offer in. But when you ask the question, can you see yourself living here and creating memories in this home? What is buying a home like this? You're a first time buyer, you know, Harold, you're a first time buyer. What does this mean for you and your family? And you may get some people that shed a tear. Like if you could get someone to shed a tear right there in that appointment, like you better believe you guys connected, right? They may say like, you don't even know what I've been through. Like I've been working so hard over time. I've saved up so much money. I came from a different country or I come from a poor background or whatever it might be. And they start getting emotional on you. And you know, this is something bigger than just buying a home. Anybody can help someone just buy a home. But if you're able to be part of someone's life-changing event because you ask those questions and you figure out what it means to them and why is it important to them, why now? That's what I would ask someone. Hey, hey, Maori, thanks for coming out here. I just have a question for you. Why now? Why buying a home right now? Why is it important for you to do this right now? You want to get someone to open up to you? You got to ask questions that allow them to open up to you right? Why now? And then what's going to happen is they're going to sell you on why they have to buy the house. You're not selling them, right? It's a reverse psychology, right? Hey guys, it's a tough market. I'm sure you've seen the news, you know, all the different things going on, but you guys are courageous enough to come out here and go look at homes. Why now, despite everything that's going on? Think about that, right? And then they're going to tell you, well, Enrique, you no, we've been in a freaking two bedroom. I got four kids. My kids, they're grown now. I want to be able to give them something I never had when I grew up. Think about that, right? And now like that connection between you and you guys is way deeper. It's a deeper level connection. And that's what it's all about. You want to win someone over, you connect with them at a deep level because there's thousands of agents out there that are just real surface level, just trying to close the deal just transactional, not really getting in tune with what's important to the client and what this is going to do for their life. What you got, Diana? I've also been sharing, um, you know, Iris's story about, yeah, we just got our client in 75,000 under, you know, sharing a little bit of that too. So they see what we're doing. And I, I like that kind of builds up credibility. I did have a showing right now and a lead that came in. He wanted to offer, you know, a certain lower price. So I showed up and I have everything with me. I have the purchase contract, everything, but he didn't come. And uh, we talked and <laughs> it's the, the house does have some foundation issues. So I did say, Hey, you know, run it by your lender. Make sure that's not a problem. I brought everything to the front. So he knows I know the whole scoop. So we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, what I was saying was, um, sharing the wins right sharing yeah. the recent yeah. wins what you've been up to mm -hmm. yeah share the recent wins right even if you personally don't have a win right share the team's wins share someone else's win they don't know like who it was you know maori just got three hundred thousand off on his client's property right got it for 2.3 comps were at 2.6 that's a win that you can share like hey our team was able to help you know this person Okay, guys, we got five more minutes. Um, I want to be conscious of you guys' time. So we did all that, right? We built the connection. We shed a tear. We talked about where we came from. We were born in the same town. We went to the same school, all these different things, right? We're now like, we're homies now, right? Like, we're like pounding, like, yeah, you invite me to the barbecue, blah, 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 right? Like, we're good to go. How do you transition people over from a great experience with showing to now let's go write some offers on these properties? How do you get them to the offer table now? 
who would like to share what they do? Is there a certain like transition? Harold. So um, we, we talked about this a while ago, but it's the mini consultation. Um, so at the end of the showings, I try to take my clients and be like, okay, so let's, so uh, what do you guys think about all the homes, right? Let them give me their feedback. And then I, I should know, I, before I did all the showings, I should already know the offer deadlines for them um, if they do have deadlines. And then I let them know, hey, I know it's, um, it's Saturday today. We have two of the homes due uh, offer deadline by Monday, and then one of them is due on Tuesday. Now, out of these, um, are there any of them that you would be interested in writing an offer on? And then they'll usually ask me like, okay, what does that process entail, right? I'm like, okay, well, an offer isn't just about the price that you want to do. We also have to look at disclosures. We have to look at the comps. Um, and we got to figure out exactly how much activity the listing agent has been receiving on these things, right? And then they'll be like, okay, what are disclosures? I'm like, perfect. I'm glad you asked. Like, this is what we talk about contingency. We look over inspections. Um, if there's a good time for you, I know that we have offers due on Monday. Are you free either tonight or Sunday night so that we can kind of go over all the inspections together um, before we make our offer, right? And they'll say, oh yeah, I'd like to look over those. And then immediately I can book in that consult. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm free tonight or Sunday night, um, anytime after six, what time works best for you. And that usually just leads to everything else to do the offer consultation itself. Okay, let's stop right there. So we talked about the mini consultation, right? And this was this was something that we trained with from Zillow, right? This is a technique. After you show the homes, let's say you show two, three homes, after your last home, basically, right? You now gotta just do a quick little huddle up with them, whether it's in the driveway, whether you're still in the property, whether you're outside, whether you're in the car, whether you're at Starbucks, like, hey guys, let's quickly get together and recap. We just looked at three homes and you're basically doing a mini kind of prep, right? Hey, what do you guys know about the market? Because remember, you may have gotten this from Zillow Flex. This is the first time they went out and seen homes or maybe they've already toured other homes. You want to know what they know, right? If they've submitted any other offers out of the three homes that we showed, which one stood out to you? Which ones would you like to make an offer on, right? Offers are due this day, this day, this day, whatever it might be. So you're kind of having like this mini little five, 10 minute little powwow where you're now setting them up for that consultation where now you're going to go deeper with disclosures and offer prep and all that good stuff, right? So there has to be that transition. What you don't want to do is you never want to go show homes and you never want to just say, okay, guys, call me if you're interested or I'll follow up with you tomorrow or I got to go, I got to do this. That's the biggest mistake, right? You need to make sure you're doing some sort of recap with them and you're seeing where they're at, where they're at. Because they're going to tell you two things, either number one, like, hey, we saw those three homes and this one, we actually like that one. Or you know what? Out of those three, we didn't like any of them. Okay, great. Tell me why you didn't like them, right? What else, if we're looking for a home, what would you like to have seen in a home or what are the things you didn't like, right? And this is your opportunity to now get information and adjust what homes you see next. There always has to be a next appointment after you show the home. The next appointment is either we're gonna meet to go over disclosures and write an offer, or we're gonna go see more homes. Or like, hey, hey I'm not approved at all. Like I haven't even got pre-approved. This is just, we clicked on Zillow, we met you, blah, blah, blah. I love it, I wanna move forward. Great, we need to set up a consultation so you get on the line with our lender with Jerry, right? Jerry's gonna get you guys pre-approved. So there has to be an appointment that follows that showing that you just did. Never just let them go back to the wild, right? Because then an agent like me is going to come and swoop them up from you, right? You always need to take them to that next appointment. Um, so mini consultation, quick huddle up, quick powwow, ask some questions, get feedback, and then determine, is it, are we going consultation and offer review? Or are we going back to the drawing board to search for more homes? Or do I got to get my lender involved to figure out that piece of the puzzle? But it should never be like, hey, call me back later or I'll call you later, right? You never want to do that. I don't know. What else can you guys add to that? Is there anything to add to that final piece of what do you do after you showed the homes? I'll add something. Jay, you got anything? I'll add okay. something. Yeah. 
I just think that um, whatever you do, I think you just have to come from a good place because I think like ultimately people know when you're trying to sell them something. So I think and just like try to be genuine and try to do this for the right reasons because I think people can feel that energy. Yeah, so so you're right. Yeah, making sure you deliver it in a way. Like I'm delivering it fast and because you guys are agents. I'm getting straight to the point. But obviously when, when you're talking to your client, you want to really empathize with them and you want to let them know like my job is to make sure you find the home that matches all your wants and needs and you get it at the best price and the best terms. This is why we need to sit down and go over the disclosures and the comps. We need to determine what's the best strategies so that we can get you what you want. And remember, if you ask those deep questions during the showing, like, what does this mean to you? You're able to use that in the conversation. Like, I want to get you out of that two bedroom, you know, condo and get your kids their own room. This is why we need to meet, right? And now it becomes about something bigger. So yeah, you're right. Like the delivery definitely needs to be genuine, right? And making sure they know like, okay, we're not just trying to sell them. We're trying to help them get closer to their goal. Um, and then at that point, right, if you know they want to, if you know they have a property they're interested in, then you got to call the agent and become best friends with the agent to try to figure out where you need to be. Diana, what do you got? Uh, just real quick before I forget, you know, I remember I met this one guy in Vegas and he was saying what his team does. This isn't like really necessarily about showing, but it's the step right before, like if it's a flex lead that they'll call the listing agent with the client. Like, okay, so you say, okay, I'm going to schedule the showing. Then you call the client back. And then they call the listing agent and he has like some embedded commands of, Oh, we saw the pictures. I have a buyer and you know, he's looking to, we're, we will write an offer, but we just want to see it in person just to make sure that the pictures match. And by the way, you did your photos like they're great. Send me that, you know, contact. And so that way that your client puts in his mind that we're going to write offers. Right. And that was just one of the tips that I heard. And you were on vacation, so I didn't get to run it by you. But yeah. Got it. Yeah. So that way so calling the listing agent. Mm -hmm with the client on and tell the um, client, okay, I'm going to ask a couple of questions. So stay quiet. Yeah, no, that's definitely good. I know we've used that tactic, especially when you're trying to get the client to like come up in price or something like that. And the client is, you know, they know you're telling them, but they don't know if that's coming from the listing agent, getting them on the phone in front of the listing agent so that they kind of see the behind the scenes that can totally change their perspective. Okay. You're not just trying to sell me. This is actually coming from them, right? So yeah, like that's definitely a great tactic to add. Um, use that, you know, when necessary. Get your client on the phone or, or get them to hear the conversation with the listing agent. All right, guys, um, we're at time now. Um, I think this was an awesome training. Hopefully you guys got some value out of it. Um, thank you guys all for contributing. Good, really, really good stuff, guys. I don't, those of you guys that are newer, right? I don't expect you guys to learn this overnight. This is something you're going to have to go through, but I'll, I'll uh, send out the PDF with kind of all the steps, the main bullet points we talked to. So have this video to watch for the replay and the, the bullet points. That's going to be your guide, right? To make sure you're checking off all those things. And over time, and some of you guys may, may have just learned a couple things you can add to your arsenal now as well. So really good stuff, guys. Thank you so much for joining. See you next time.